Today, we're going to be exploring Tier 2 of the Red Dead Redemption Mysteries Iceberg. 95% of my viewers are unsubscribed, so subscribe if you want to see the rest of this iceberg as we'll be posting these every single day. Mythical Horses. In Red Dead Redemption 1's Undead Nightmare, there are about four mythical horses that you can find and tame, and they should pop up on the map and it should say like where to find the mythical horse. It'll be like, oh, in Nuevo Perry, so there's a mythical horse that you can find and then go tame it. And they all have their own like special ability, like this one can like set all the zombies on fire. And I think this is honestly my favorite one. I always use this one in Undead Nightmare. And just overall, they're all pretty cool and you should like want to tame all of them. But there are a couple of them that I believe you can only tame after the game ends in Undead Nightmare, so like they're not as achievable, but they do add to the whole mythical setting and element of Undead Nightmare. Edmund Lowry Jr. Edmund Lowry Jr. is the main character of the Stranger Mission American Dreams and a serial killer. You can find his like victims bodies all around the map and you eventually like put together a map to find his hiding place and it's a really cool like kind of detective mystery and you kind of get to piece it all together as you find these bodies but it's not that interesting and it is a pretty cool stranger mission but like it's not that detective -y. it's kind of just like you see it on the map and you put it together and then you wait a little bit and then you find another body and you put it together but i do think it is a pretty cool stranger mission in the fact that there's like a serial killer and you can kind of piece it all together in your own way but you do get to see his backstory. He does have a pretty solid backstory. And then eventually when you do get to take him to the sheriff, he does like fight off the sheriff and you can either save, save the sheriff or just let him fight off the sheriff himself. But either way, I really, really like this stranger mission. Edmund Lowry Jr. has a pretty crazy backstory and just overall is connected to a lot more stuff than it seems like in Red Dead Redemption 2. The Antler Knife. The Antler Knife is a knife that you can find from a dead hunter where he's trapped under a bear that he killed previously. The knife isn't all that different from a normal hunting knife, but it's kind of interesting to see the whole scene where the hunter died. And you do get like a cool, interesting, rare item if you do, you know, take the knife from the hunter. Charlotte Balfour's Stalker. You can actually find a, a character outside of Emerald Station who describes a woman similar to Charlotte, a widow who's on her own and how he's been watching her from outside the bushes. It's a crazy little story from this guy, but he's actually one of the creepiest characters in the entire game. And when looking at his campsite, you can see that he has handcuffs and naked photos of women, showing that he's very much a creep and probably going to do some bad things to Charlotte if you don't stop him before then. Otis Miller's Treasure. Otis Miller is a legendary RDR2 gunslinger similar to Landon Ricketts and you can find his treasure by piecing together two halves of a treasure map which you can find by killing specific hermits in the game. I believe one is in Roanoke Ridge and one is in the very northern part of West Elizabeth but after putting the map together you can find Miller's Cave where you can find a little bit of you know treasure and his specific revolver which is made out of all gold and is just a really cool thing and there's also six erotic photographs so if you do need any of those john needs a little bit of those when he gets a little bit bored with abigail he can use those pleasance is an abandoned town in red dead redemption 2 which was founded in 1883 and abandoned after a massacre where almost all of the town members were killed many people have theories about the disappearance from a plague hitting the town as there's supposedly signs of plague where it says like oh plague keep out or that the town worships satan and they all off themselves together because there's no cross on the town's church and just overall there's a ton of different theories about what happened with pleasance but either way there was a massacre of some kind that went down here and just overall, it's a really creepy town that if you do go and check it out, Haunted Tumbleweed. In Red Dead Redemption 1, Tumbleweed has been abandoned like its name implies, but players believe there were Easter eggs that either showed that the town was haunted or just overall made it a lot more creepy. I mean, of course, an abandoned town is going to be creepy, especially in like the early Red Dead Redemption 1 era when there's stuff like Herobrine and a lot of other like creepy, like imaginary tales of like game developers adding characters in to make it a little bit more scary and just overall like there are a couple things in tumbleweed that have like a little bit creepy connotations where there is a poorly implemented cheat code i believe called the devil got into that beast which is actually in the uh, church in tumbleweed and a lot of people think that's an associate with the devil but i think overall it's just like Tumbleweed's a creepy town because it's abandoned and because Rockstar wanted to make something that's relatively creepy. There's not really any hauntedness with it. I mean, maybe there is, but, and maybe I'm wrong, but I just don't think it's, 
haunted at all. I think it's more of just, oh, it's an early town that's kind of creepy and haunted. So people just went with that. The Night Folk are a group of people that live in Lemoyne swamps who are extremely gruesome. They're basically like the Murphy brood, but just even weirder. They speak their own language don't have any clothes on and they basically one shot you whenever they hit you and just overall are extremely creepy especially when you can only encounter them in the swamps but they're like one of the weirdest groups in the entire game i think them and the murphy root have a lot of the same encounters where they like the hanging body but there's one encounter where you meet this like screaming young woman and then the the night folk just attack you from there i don't really know why exactly they want to kill you or attack the player character but they're one of the creepiest things you can see in the night, especially when you're going through the swamps, which is already a creepy thing to go through at nighttime during Red Dead Redemption 2. The Saint Denis Vampire is a character that can be found if you find his five writings around Saint Denis beforehand. Arthur or John will draw a map leading to the vampire's final location in Saint Denis by drawing a pentagram and then they all meet in the middle. Where if you go there at midnight, you can see him chomping on his next victim. Then you can decide to either save the victim. I'm pretty sure the victim's dead at this point. But you can either fight off the vampire or you can just let him go. And the vampire just doesn't do anything to you. But if he does attack you, he can kill you in one hit. But if the player does kill him, he will drop a unique dagger and some bat wings. You know, kind of referring how vampires are also like can turn into bats at some points and in, in certain fairy tales and whatnot but this is one of the coolest things and one of the creepiest just secret encounters in all of red dead redemption 2. the jaguaro panther is the final legendary animal who can only be found after completing master hunter rank 9. it's one of the hardest like legendary animals to kill all the other ones are i'm not gonna lie really easy to kill but this one supposedly is a lot harder to do and just overall, if you do find it and hunt it, you can actually complete Master Hunter rank 10, which is really cool and like a nice achievement to like finish the game off. American Appetites. This is a Red Dead Redemption 1 stranger mission where John investigates missing people in Armadillo and finds out that it's a cannibal that's killing them all. One of the victims injures the cannibal and he tries to play it off as like, oh, the guy attacked me. But you realize that the cannibal is the bad guy there because he tries to eat the guy after you leave him with each other but you eventually get the option to either kill the cannibal or let the cannibal eat the guy and of course most people should you know kill the cannibal because what's the point in eating people that's just a crazy thing to do so i mean i always put a bullet in that guy's head gertrude braithwaite she's a member of the braithwaite family that was locked up because she's disfigured they've locked her in an outhouse and if you actually take penelope there she'll say she'll try to help to get gertrude out but in the epilogue you can see that gertrude is actually starved to death so it's just a crazy thing in general like they really locked up a member of the family because she was disfigured and like i kind of understand it because you're rich and like wealthy family you don't really want someone like this like ruining your image but still, it's just a crazy thing to lock someone up in an outhouse because they look a little different from you. The Meteor House and Meteorite. In Roanoke Ridge, you can find a solo cabin, which looks normal from the outside, but on the inside, you can see that a meteorite killed the family while they were eating a meal. If you actually pick up the meteorite, you can reduce your environmental damage by 10%, and there are a couple other meteorites spread throughout the map, but that will be discussed in depth in a couple of the other entries. The Giant in Amberino. A giant can be found and spoken to in Amberino. You actually have to have studied 30 different species of animals before encountering his character, but he's hidden behind a cave wall, and the only way to actually like find him and talk to him just like this is you have to find him in the game files because they do actually have a PD model of him, but it seems like a lot of like the animations weren't fully done, so they didn't want him to be released into the game. So they just hit him behind a wall and you know, he is kind of a cool character and there are a couple cool encounters with him, but overall I just don't think he's all that interesting of a character and I just wish we were able to see him because it's kind of lame that he's just hidden behind a wall. Ches Porter in Clausen's Rest. Ches Porter is a set of cabins where a family that doesn't really visit the outside world lives. They have their own dialect and are known to rob and murder other people. Javier and Arthur can rob their house during chapters 2 and 3, and while doing the robbery or before the robbery, you can actually overhear them talking about a woman who they kept prisoner in the woods, and they were like, you know, going out to, I don't know, do stuff and do weird stuff to her. Either way, though, down the road from Ches Porter is a homestead that's actually boarded up and has two deceased children's bodies inside. Their mother left them a letter saying not to leave unless she came back, 
in that she was going to get their money back from men, resulting in players connecting the two incidents together. They're also like really close to each other and it does sound like there was a woman that these people were keeping boarded up and it kind of makes sense that these two would be connected in some way. But there's no definitive connections between the two, but I definitely think they are connected in some sort of way. The ruins of Limpany. Limpany is an abandoned town in New Hanover that Arthur can visit. It's right by the Horseshoe Overlook campsite, and it w seems like the whole town was burned down recently enough before the game started. It's also in Red Dead Redemption Online, but I would assume it got burned down right before then. But there are a bunch of Cornwall kerosene and tar barrels around the property so people either believe that like cornwall like owned the town and he burned it down or a rival burned it down either way it is a pretty cool and interesting town there is some gold there and just overall it's just like a really weird town that has not that much lore to it and overall there's a lot of theories behind it Okray's Run Tribute. Okray's Run, the lake where Hamish the Veteran lives, was actually named after the former voice actor for Uncle in Red Dead Redemption 1, John Okray, who passed away during the development of Red Dead Redemption 2, so they named this lake after him in memoriam. The Old Tomb is an ancient burial site in Roanoke Ridge, New Hanover. The Viking helmet and hatchet can be found here, showing that it was probably made by Vikings. Old World Scripts is a runestone that can be found in the more, most northeast section of the map and it's engraved with Phoenician letters which can be translated to we arrived by boat, beautiful land, gracious people, so we left them to live in peace. Both these points of interest point to the fact that the Vikings reached America before any other Europeans and likely in Red Dead Redemption 2 they also did, but they never reached this far west, like they never reached as far west as uh, Roanoke Ridge would be. It is just kind of a cool little Easter egg and nod that the Vikings were here before any other Europeans. Charles Kinnear's Flying Machine. Charles Kinnear is a stranger that John can meet in New Austin who's building a glider because he believes he can fly. John gives him the materials for the glider. Kinnear will welcome him to the Virgin Flight where Kinnear realizes he built the glider improperly while in the air and falls to his death. This is a little bit of an Easter egg to a guy in, I believe, Paris who fell to his death while kind of doing the same thing and just like overall to the Wright brothers because they kind of built a similar glider even though they didn't die in their virgin flight. But I just think overall it's a pretty cool and interesting little Easter egg that they threw in there. Francis Sinclair, Time Traveler. Francis Sinclair is a stranger that Arthur or John can meet in Red Dead Redemption 2 who asks him to find 10 different rock carvings throughout Red Dead Redemption 2's map for him. After completing this task, Arthur or John can return to his cabin where they encounter Francis's mother who's holding Francis as a baby and this little thing on the wall that shows like Francis time traveling through a bunch of different worlds and like times and also Francis is supposedly connected to the Epsilon program in GTA because he has the same mark as the people from the Epsilon program do and it says like that is the way they shift from each paradigm similar into like a tra time travel way either way there's some connected lore between this and GTA 5's Epsilon program and overall this is just way too deep for me and if you do want to check out some more theories there are some much better ones than just this. Abandoned Trading Post. This is a POI that can be found in Roanoke Ridge where a couple of random items can be found but if you do come here at night a lantern will be lit showing that it might not be that abandoned after all. There's not really any specific mystery with this one so I don't really know why it's on this list. Tommy after the fight. After the fight with Arthur, where Arthur beats the shit out of Tommy, Tommy can be found in the A Quiet Time mission in the Valentine Saloon, or just around town, I believe, and you can see him, and he's just not really a human anymore, he's a vegetable, he can't really talk anymore, he just talks in these grunts, and it seems like Tommy is like mentally disabled somehow, like Arthur broke a part of his brain, and now he just kind of has to live with that, like... Arthur was saved by Downs and like I guess it was kind of a weird way this is karma like he got tuberculosis for basically like killing Tommy in a way because he has no brain cells left. I don't know it's a crazy thing and I think there is kind of a theory of like the karma there because Downs stopped him from like fully killing Tommy but still Arthur like got killed in his own way because of him mentally disabling Tommy so I don't know it's a really cool thing and the fact that you actually can see what happened to Tommy after the fight is just a great thing and shows that Arthur should really be a better person after this. The rare rolling block rifle 
This weapon can be taken from one of the bounty hunters who was after Trelawney in the mission Magicians for Sport, but there's not really that much interesting else about it besides it being like this rare weapon that takes up a different slot in your inventory, even though it's just a little bit better than the regular rolling block. I don't understand why they just didn't just make a different weapon instead of this, but it is kind of cool in its own way. John the Drunk. John is a character that you can meet at the Smithfield Saloon or just the regular saloon in Valentine who just rants about random things like his resentment of different ethnic groups and often will just insult random people he meets. Basically, whenever you go to the saloon, you can hear this guy talking about random things and he's just such an asshole and the funny thing is if you do put on like the same raccoon hat that he wears this guy will get pissed off at you and i mean he kind of just gets pissed off at everyone but it's kind of funny that you can like make him even more mad by wearing the exact same hat as him bonnie mcfarland's lover you can loot a random man outside of van horn where it seems like he was involved in some sort of shipwreck and he's like still alive in some point but he's not really alive and he says like oh i never stopped loving her tell her that and he has a letter on him addressed to bonnie mcfarland detailing his love for her and how he's going to come back for her after he became a rich man but clearly he did not become a rich man and come back and save her and his destiny was to die right there and for arthur to loot his body which is really funny and that's why you know bonnie did never find a, a man to love her because this guy her true love died before he could you know bring her back either way though it's a really cool like little easter egg that ties it back to red Dead redemption one and a character that's like pretty important in red Dead redemption one even without like it being a really big overt easter egg the lenora view tragedy in a random encounter a stranger will show you a man who fell off the cliff and died and if you go further up the road you can go to this man's cabin where he says he will be back in a few days after picking up his new wife mildred Soon after, you can find a letter at his cabin wondering where he is and says that he wishes she abandoned him before they got married. And it's just like one of the saddest encounters you can find in Red Dead Redemption 2 because these people had the happiest night of their lives when they were getting married. And this guy, as soon as he was going to pick up his wife and start his new life with her, he immediately falls off the edge of the cliff and dies. And the guy just starts laughing at him pointing at his body which is just i don't know it's really funny and it's just one of the saddest like side encounters in all of red dead redemption 2. that wraps up tier 2 of the red dead redemption mysteries iceberg the next video will be coming out tomorrow detailing tier 3 and it should be out right now for members so subscribe to my membership if you want to see it right now